Hey friends, thanks for coming along on the journey with this tractor project. In the previous video I talked about how this tractor had its series of electrical issues. Uh, the main one being the battery wasn't charging so we put an alternator in it. And the next issue is to get the lighting working on the tractor. And this tractor has quite a few lights. We're going to be installing some new lamps to mount into the fenders and these are the standard lights that go on the tractor so we're going to put four of those in and it also has four lamps which are up above the cab and some lamps in the back side of the cab and some marker lights to operate these lights there is a light switch that goes into the cab of the tractor which is a multi-position switch that can either be in the off position or in positions one two or three and that works out great because I'd like to be able to turn on the fender lights in position one, the upper lights on the cab forward facing in position two, and then in position three to turn on the backup lights. Now I'd like to be able to turn these things on sequentially so that I can just have the fender lights on by themselves. Or I can leave these on and also turn on the high lamps above the cab and then in the final position have the forward facing lights still running while also turning on the backup lights. Unfortunately the switch that comes with the tractor doesn't have enough terminal positions to accommodate that kind of wiring setup. So let's go inside and go to the whiteboard and I'll show you how I'm planning on wiring up this John Deere switch in such a way that it can actuate the lights the way that I want them to be actuated. It will be a quick simple lesson on automotive wiring. Okay folks, so we've got our switch panel which is a four position switch including off which is perfect for the tractor setup because I want to be able to run the fender lights, the forward cab lights, or the backup lights or off. But I want all of these lights to work in conjunction with each other. So the fender lights can come on independently, but then when I turn on the upper cab lights, I want them to also keep the fender lights and then turn those additional lights on. And with the rear backup lights, I want all of the forward lights still staying on while I turn on the rear backup lights. So I took the switch in and I looked at the back side of it which has a whole bunch of terminals and I took a multimeter and measured continuity between the different terminals at the different switch positions to try to figure out what the architecture of this John Deere switch is and it's a little bit unusual in that in a way it's almost like there are two switches within one body and so let me draw this out schematically so you can see what I mean the switch has four positions including off. So let's try black. So we have the off position which is no contact. Then we have a contact for position one and two. And then the third position actually has no contact. And we have the wiper which connects between any of these switch positions. And let's put it to number one. And then for the last position, there's really another wiper which has no contact to anything in the first three. But when the switch is in position four, it's got an output. So the switch looks something like this. Two wipers that go to their own independent set of output contacts, where the secondary only has a contact for the last switch position and the first wiper can only connect in positions one or two. That's fine. So what we will do is we will connect these two wipers together and we'll put them to a power source. And then on the, and the switch is in the all the way up position, it's off, nothing happens. When we go to the first position, like it's drawn right here, 
we want the fender lights to come on. So let's say that's the light and the light goes to ground on the other side. Now in reality the fender lights are a group of lights. Um, four light bulbs plus some marker lights. And so in actuality we would have the four lights and some markers. And they all go to ground on one side and on the top side they all get energized by the same 12 volt supply so they're all wired in parallel i want this i want 12 volts to go to each of these lamps so they're just wired up in parallel and that's what this represents now likewise when we go to the next position down this position here and here would represent the lights that are on the forward side of the cab up high. Kind of like the high beams, if you will. So for that, we'll come out and go to those lamps. And they go to ground. And then likewise, in the final position, we'll come down here off of this blade. And these will be the lights on the back of the tractor. This is the cab and these are the fenders. So with this setup we can turn on the fender lights or the cab lights or the backup lights. But when we turn on any of these lights the others are off and that's just the amount of switch contacts we have. But I'd like it so that when I turn on the cab lights I keep the fender lights on. And when I turn on the back lights, I keep both these on as well. Well, if I switched it over to the cab lights, those are the only things that are going to be illuminated by the switch. But if I ran a wire up from here to here, then when I switched it on, it would turn on these lights and the fender lights. Uh, but the problem with doing that is that if I go to the fender lights, it's also going to turn on the cab lights. So these two lights would be ganged together permanently and we don't want to do that. I only want the connection to happen between these two lines when the cab lights are turned on. And so to do that we can add a relay into the circuit. And a relay is just simply a switch but instead of using your hand to actuate the switch we use a little electromagnet to make the switch connection. So if we were to schematically draw that out we've got a little electromagnet and I'll put one side to ground and we can apply power to the other side and so that'll make some magnetic pull and then we have a contact like so that gets pulled down when the magnet is energized so when we energize the magnet these contacts make and uh, power can come through the contacts when we remove power these open up and we don't get any conductivity through the relay. So it's just a electrically controlled switch. Very simple. Now of course there are different sized relays and relays with different numbers of contacts available and so forth. But what I just drew there is uh, an example of a very simple automotive relay that you can pick up at any auto parts store, which is what I'm going to be using for this project. So what I want to do is I want to connect these two lines together when this one is energized. So that's real simple. I'll just take a relay, put the coil here, and ground him, and that will operate a set of contacts in the relay. And we'll take this contact and go up to that line. And take this contact and go to this line. Uh, the nicest way. Let me like that. Okay. So when we apply power to the fender lights, power comes up, it turns on the fender lights, but nothing happens here because the relay is disconnected and open. Nothing can flow through that way. So just the fender lights come on. When we flip the switch, 
over to our cab lights. Power comes through here, turns on the cab lights, energizes this relay, clink, which ties this line and this line together, and it turns on the fender lights and the cab lights at the same time. So that works out. Now we'll do the exact same thing for the rear facing lights. Off of this we will put in a relay to ground and he'll have a set of contacts with one of them coming right off of there and uh, I should draw this a little more like that and then this line will come up to feed right there. So when we flip the switch to turn on the rear facing lights on the tractor, which would be right here and down here, power comes down, turns on the back lights, energizes this relay, closes the circuit, and passes power on up to this line right here which turns on the forward-facing cab lights and in turn energizes his relay which closes and then also turns on the fender lights for the tractor. So that's a real quick lesson on simple automotive electronics and how you can use relays in your design to add some more switch contacts where you don't have them originally and get the system to work with the logic that you want. Hope you found it entertaining and if you did I would appreciate it if you take a second and click subscribe if you haven't already because that helps the channel grow. It helps the YouTube metrics and I appreciate it. And I uh, hope you enjoy the journey with the tractor. I'll keep you posted and updated as things progress. Thanks for tuning in. I'll hopefully see you again soon in an upcoming video.